let's talk about Watt. No, not JJ Watt, which is apparently one of the first things that comes up when I Google Watt. But the Watt back in the 1700s, who was such a fantastic engineer, physician, and scientist that people named the unit of power after him. Watt. James Watt was born in 1736 in Scotland to a very well-educated family. His father was a successful carpenter who built ships, his grandfather was a fantastic mathematician, and his mother was well-educated and intelligent and actually taught James Watt. Yes, James Watt was actually homeschooled in the first few years of his life, where his mother taught him reading and his father taught him how to write and mathematics. He was not homeschooled all his life though. Later on in his life, he went to a screen in Greenock, where he excelled in mathematics, science, and not so much, however, in literature. However, with his fantastic scores and amazing mind, he didn't study in a university. When it was time for him to go into university, his family experienced a lot of financial troubles with unfortunate events and his mother dying that resulted in him not being able to afford to go into university, unfortunately. He later went on to London where he learned about instrument making, uh, instruments being for scientific purposes, and he excelled at that. This required lots of science and mathematical skill and with his good scores and his amazing brain, he excelled very well at that. He then went to Glasgow University to work as an assistant when it comes to fixing their equipment and it was there where the university professors saw his work and marveled at his work. They saw that his brain and capabilities and ability to understand and use the science of knowledge practically was up to the standards of themselves and they started to invite him to look at their, his, their own work and comment on it and they started discussing about such things and they wanted him to stay so they actually built a lab for him to work on in that university, yes! So even though he didn't go to university for learning, he kind of did in the end. And it was there where he managed to meet a lot of fantastic, talented people such as Adam Smith, which is a very famous economist. You might know him from the book uh, Wealth of Nations. And it was at a university where he actually learned German and Italian, so he could actually be able to read a lot of other engineers' books in their native language. But let's talk one of the things that he's most credited by, and that is inventing the steam engine. Actually, that is a huge misconception. He didn't invent the steam engine, but he improved on the steam engine in a way that made it a lot more efficient and functional. His interest in steam engines came after looking at the current generation of steam engines. That was designed by Thomas Coleman, and he was assigned to fix that steam engine. He looked at it and was appalled by the lack of efficiency it had. The old system functioned by having hot water being boiled to produce steam, which would make the piston go up, and then later cold water was to be pushed into that same cylinder slash piston which would make the piston go down. This was a huge problem because heating up the cylinder and then cooling it was not efficient. A, it required lots of power in order to heat up the water and then cool the water again and cool the cylinder and then heat it back up. And it lost pressure with each stroke. According to Watt, three quarters of power was wasted with this system. And then, after two years of experimentation and thinking about the system and how it could be improved, he came up with a new design. Instead of water being released into the cylinder to cool it, a second cylinder was added that was isolated and it was connected to the same cylinder that allowed the steam to flow in so that the piston could be pushed down. This made it way more efficient. And as a result, steam engines became more commonplace and his patented design is what you see in most steam engines these days. This is no small milestone. Because of the steam engine and some other works, he is credited as the father of the industrial revolution. He brought an efficient motor to the world that allowed things to be done more efficiently and automated. Be it things like transportation or things like a grass cutter, which is running out steam. I don't know why you want to do that, but okay. Humphrey Davy says, which is a quote, so I'm gonna read off the computer monitor. James Watt was equally distinguished as a natural philosopher and chemist. His inventions demonstrate his profound knowledge of those 
science and that particular characteristic of genius. The union of them for practical application. James Watt continued working through retirement and he worked on even more things like copying machines, rotary engines which are very important in cars, steam pressure indicators and a lot more. His work can be seen in many things today and it's well worth the, that we named the unit of power after him. What? He died unfortunately on the year 1819 with a super sharp brain still that still had a lot of potential. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, it was quite fun to research on and if you like more videos like this, don't subscribe to this channel because this is not something I'll do regularly. But if you want to see other things I do, I do talk about technology, IT, gadgets and how to use over the Access Project, so go ahead and check that out. And thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.